Hello there. In this video, I'm going to discuss an email question that I got from a, I don't know, a middle-aged man. He's got issues with atrophic gastritis and GERD, acid reflux, and high cholesterol. He's been having some issues resolving all three of those and wanted to get some information from me on how to improve them. So I'm going to read his email here quickly. Uh, Dr. Ben, I've been suffering from acid reflux and gastritis. I've tried the Manuka honey, which does help plus a provide a 12 from the website. Is there something else I'm doing wrong? Also, my cholesterol numbers have been over 200. I can't seem to keep them at normal range. The doc tells me that I have, been t I have to be taking cholesterol meds. I'd rather go for natural products. Is there any suggestions that might help me? Thanks a lot. So, good questions. Uh, so, the Manuka honey he's taking, because I wrote an article that showed some research about how Manuka honey is really effective were quite effective for those suffering from Helicobacter pylori. And let me back up a bit before I start discussing the H. pylori. Um, so given that he's got acid reflux, that he's got low stomach acid, and Helicobacter pylori does not like stomach acid. In fact, it does not like it at all. So it actually burrows itself in the layer of your stomach so the stomach acid can't kill it. And if you're on acid reflux medications or proton pump inhibitors, or little purple pills, or what have you, or Tums, or any type of antacid, you are setting yourself up for not only Helicobacter pylori uh, problem, but you're also setting yourself up for a B12 deficiency and iron deficiency and other nutrients as well. So that said, he set himself up with the acid reflux for gastritis. And gastritis, one of the main causes of the gastritis is actually Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori is a, it's one of those words in standard medicine that is kind of frowned upon right now. And actually in, in uh, naturopathic medicine, a lot of docs don't think it's that prevalent. I'm kind of disagreeing probably uh, more than most, or disagreeing with my colleagues on this because I'm seeing too much gastritis. I'm seeing too much gastritis and GERD at the same time. So what's the bottom line here? What, what does this guy need to do? He needs to support his stomach acid, but he can't support his stomach acid until he, just like some guys buzzing my Skype, turn it off, sorry. Do not disturb, All right? So in order to do that, he can't he get rid of the H. pylori, he needs to get his stomach acid back up, but he can't get his stomach acid back up because he's got gastritis. If you take stomach acid and you got gastritis, it's gonna burn. So he needs to be taking L-glutamine so I recommend mixing, I don't know, 5-10 grams of L-glutamine in a glass of water or actually a 1 liter water bottle, probably 10, 10 20, 30 grams of L-glutamine in 1 liter of, of water. Drink it throughout the day between meals and that will help heal the gastritis and the ulcer in his stomach um, or just actually between the stomach and his, his duodenum. Um, so that will help um, and he can also be avoiding spicy foods such as coffee, um, wheat is a big one, so stop the wheat, stop the caffeine, stop the spices, uh, those are some big ones. Tomatoes is also another one. Uh, any type of spicy food will aggravate it, so you gotta stop those for a while. Uh, zinc carnosine is quite effective at eliminating uh, Helicobacter pylori, so you can supplement with a product containing zinc carnosine, and you can also supplement with additional soothing nutrients that your stomach needs, such as althea, which is marshmallow root, uh, ZMAs, corn silk, um, what else you got offhand here? Uh, bismuth also kills uh, Helicobacter pylori. And a lot of these nutrients are found in a product by Biogenesis called Gastric Repair Complex. So Gastric Repair Complex, Manuka honey, zinc carnosine, and Provida 12 powder can all be found at healthygoods.com. And he needs to stimulate his digestion because if he has acid reflux, uh, his digestion is weak and his stomach acid is low. But again, you cannot supplement with stomach acid until his gastritis is taken care of. So some people actually with gastritis do find benefit if they take in the morning before breakfast or before any meal, if they take a couple teaspoons of apple cider vinegar mixed with about a tablespoon of fresh uh, lemon juice squeezed in about a half a cup of filtered water. Sip this. Sip it very slowly and, and as soon as you start feeling a slight burn in your stomach, stop 
and then you can begin eating. What that has just done is stimulated your appetite and your digestion, and so and that's done through in stimulating stomach acid. So a lot of people with acid reflux actually have low stomach acid, which I said earlier. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You think you've got a reflux because you've got too much acid. No, you've got reflux because the, the food is building up in your stomach and, or you've eaten too much and you don't have enough acid. Uh, so it actually stretches the pyloric sphincter and the food comes up and it leaks the acid out. If you have more acid, the food gets chewed up quicker by the stomach acid and actually goes through the pyloric uh, sphincter through into your duodenum and your symptoms of, of uh, acid reflux go away. So all these people who are on acid uh, blockers, no, you need stomach acid. So, but again, don't take it until your gastritis is healed. And what else do I have here? Uh, yeah, the, the pro-digestion, the stomach, uh, pancreatic enzymes. So if you, if you have gas and bloating from eating proteins or carbohydrates, or you're just kind of, you know, you just don't feel good, then I recommend you stop wheat and I also recommend you take a digestive enzyme to help process that food for your digestive system so you can actually absorb it. So pro-digestion by Seeking Health is a very good, complete, broad-spectrum uh, digestive enzyme that works across numerous pHs. So those of you with really acidic stomachs, through those of you with very, unfortunately, alkaline stomachs, uh, pro-digestion will work for you. Um, if you have very bad gas uh, and bloating, then I highly recommend pro-digestion intensive. It's more comprehensive. It actually will break down gluten and casein and dairy products. And I, but I also recommend you just stop the wheat. Okay, just stop the wheat for a couple weeks to a month or forever. I don't eat it. So it took me a while not to eat it, but I don't eat it. Um, so that's it for that. So for the gastritis and the GERD we talked about and high cholesterol. High cholesterol, I don't believe in that much. Yes, there are some individuals with very, very high cholesterol, but this guy's cholesterol is around 200. I don't know what his good cholesterol is. I don't know what his bad cholesterol is. He just told me the total number. If his good cholesterol is, you know, 60, 70, 80, or 80, uh, 60 is too low, in my opinion, for beneficial HDL cholesterol. I'd like to see it higher. Um, but exercise is the best way. I know you hear this all the time, but truly, folks, exercise. You know, because if you exercise, your body has to go and fetch the bad cholesterol in the body to convert it. So the more you exercise, the more your liver utilizes the cholesterol and the more the liver makes HDL to go and fetch the cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. So you exercise, you burn up the LDL and then your liver needs more LDL. So it makes HDL to go and fetch it. And then you may increase your HDL and you lower your LDL. Perfect. You got two birds with one stone by getting your butt off the couch. And uh, of course you can eliminate the uh, saturated fats, the trans fats, uh, some good trans or saturated fats, you know, coconut oil, avocados, um, uh, you know, olive oils, those are, those are great. Um, you know, some nuts, uh, seeds are also good. Eggs, so another good one. Um, so I'm not saying, you know, get rid of all your cholesterol, just get rid of the inflammatory cholesterols and the trans fats. So you know what those are, you know, bad meats, high fat, uh, animal fats are really bad news, especially if they're not organic or free range. So the biggest problem, you know, with the cholesterol is inflammation. And I don't want to, it's, it's, you know, it's too much for this single video. So I'll get into cholesterol myth later on, but you can just Google or YouTube cholesterol myth. And there's probably some credible resources there. Just look for somebody credible discussing uh, the cholesterol myth and the real problem of arterial inflammation, because what happens if you have elevated inflammation, if you have, <laughs> excuse me, it's too, my brain going too fast. If you have high inflammation in your arteries, then what's going to happen is the, the intima and the wall in your arteries is going to get destroyed from that inflammation. And so what happens is cholesterol going through the artery is going to see that gap, that destroyed artery. It's going to say, okay, we need to fix that. So your body repairs it by stuffing cholesterol in there. So it's a repair mechanism for clots. So what's the real problem here? The problem is the inflammatory cholesterol, the inflammatory meats that you're eating, the uh, fast foods, the trans fats. You avoid those, you decrease the C-reactive protein in your body, you decrease the homocysteine levels, and those can easily be decreased by taking a supplement called homocystex, which contains uh, active folic acid 
and active B6 and active B12. And these three nutrients will lower homocysteine levels. I mean, it's, it's simple. It's simple biochemistry. It works. If you take standard folic acid, it's very difficult to convert folic acid to the active folate, and you might not lower your homocysteine levels. So test, have your doctor test you for two things, two, 5-methyltetrahydrofolate reductase gene, let's abbreviate that for you, 5-MTHFR gene, test that. Then you need to also test your homocysteine levels, okay? Those two things, and C-reactive protein HS, uh, standing for standing for uh, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Those all three are really important for cardiovascular health. Okay, so work on those three uh, lab values. Uh, Sedrate, eh, it's kind of shot in the dark, but I don't think you really need that. Okay, so homocystex uh, by seeking health is great. Take one or two a day. Uh, flow FX uh, by seeking health also reduces the viscosity and thickness of the blood. Actually reduces fibrin in the blood. So if you have excess fibrin, you're, uh, you're going to actually start creating more and more clots. So we don't want to do that, all right? So you reduce the fibrin in the, in the body through the specific enzyme found in Flow FX by seeing it all, and the fibrin uh, lowers to a safer level. And you only want to take one capsule of, of Flow FX uh, every 12 hours unless directed otherwise by your health professional, okay? I'm telling you one, <laughs> just one, and you can do one twice a day but make sure they're 12 hours apart. I take one, I'm 37 years old, I take one a day just to preventative, um, you know, because I don't want too much fire from my body. So, okay, so that's it. Any questions, post a comment below. I'm happy to answer and, uh, you know, be open. And if you think I'm a quack, you know, I'm open to uh, beating you up about that because I'm no quack. I've got my degree in cellular molecular biology from the University of Washington. And I also have my degree in naturopathic medicine from Bastyr University. So that is nearly 10 years of schooling in the sciences. So I'm very well versed in physiology, biochemistry, and endocrinology. Happy to help you. If you have a health question, you may go to seekinghealth.com and submit it uh, right from a product page. We have a ask, you know, if you're wondering about a product, you can ask a question there, or you can just go right to the contact us page. Or you can go to our um, Facebook page, facebook.com slash seeking health, or you can on Twitter, also Twitter slash seeking health, and uh, you can post your health questions there, right? Till next time, take care of yourself and uh, to get you better without meds as much as we can, right? See ya.